Hello. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Juno Diaz. A uh, tremendous honor to be here. Uh, I wanted to thank, of course, the Library of America uh, and all my uh, fellow panelists. And of course, uh, uh, Lori, thank you so much. Uh, again, I um an enormous fan of uh, Oscar Iwellos. Um, though fan probably doesn't get to the core of how important um, how important um, Oscar is to me and his work was to me. And um, I'm actually going to read from uh, Our House in the Last World, uh, a book which uh, in many ways uh, was the a great source of inspiration. You know, we all as writers have our kind of guiding light. You know, we have these consolations that lead us through the confusion and the obscurity of uh, this whole artistic process. And among the brightest of the lights for me um, uh, was Oscar Iwellos. And I've got to tell you, you know, um, there's a couple of things which uh, I don't think I've ever been, aren't said enough about uh, uh, Oscar, which is, of course, I don't know a more sort of uh, exacting um, and or a more important chronicler of the thickness of immigrant family love um, and uh, a, a thick love in the terms of, uh, in the words of Toni Morrison, that is both uh, sustaining and really, really perilous and really just an important um, uh, aspect of uh, the, not only the immigrant experience, but many experiences. And uh, But the other thing about Oscar is that, um, you know, a lot of his books are, as you know, set in the past and really just one of the most remarkable world builders because you don't set books in the 40s and 50s um, without having uh, an incredible talent for world building. And um, the piece that I'm going to read uh, is from the Our House in the Last World, just a tiny aspect, uh, just a tiny fragment, and really just how he sets um, this world that he's going to be wrestling with, it's going to haunt this book, a world just limbed with nostalgia and longing. And um, it's just a paragraph, and it goes, Life was quiet in Olguin. The world was different then. People believed in God, and children died at early ages of the fever and tuberculosis. Saints and angels walked in gardens. The living called to the dead through spiritualists, Horses were left dead in the streets, and honking automobiles frightened swarms of birds off the tree tops. Priests were respected, and there were very few robberies, especially in Mercedes' town. And the poor were provided for by charities and fed with scraps of food given out after the last meal of the day. People were more polite, more elegant, and they liked to go promenading in the park on sunny afternoons. Because people died more easily, there was more praying and there were more funerals, which twisted through the streets with coachmen and pallbearers dressed in long black robes and wide three-cornered hats. And everyone but everyone knew one another's name and gave greetings as they passed. In those days, Mercedes was a little girl with a Cleopatra hairdo and a red ribbon in her hair. And so clear that this kind of nostalgic vision is going to be skewered by the rest of the book. But anyway, um, that's all. Thank you so much. And uh, what a great honor.